What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I want to show you how to do a bottom app bar button with KVMD and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at this bottom app bar button right here. We're going to move it around, make it look different and all the good things. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books. One time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, it has been a while since we've done Kivi. I've been gone for a few weeks, as you know, but we're back at it. And in this video, I want to do this bottom app bar specifically this little button here. So we've got it right here. You might want it in the center. You might want it down here overlapping. You might want it overlapping in the center or above this bar here. We're gonna look at all these things in this video. So head back over to our text editor. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find the code for this video in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Kivi videos. There's, I don't know, a ton of them. Check them out if you haven't seen them yet. So. I've got two files here, bbutton.py and bbutton.kv. I don't know what that's supposed to stand for, bar button maybe, I don't know. We've got our basic Kivi starter code, we've got our main app here, and I've just set it to dark and blue gray like we've been doing lately. And we've got the kv file pointed to our bbutton.kv file, which is this guy over here. So I'm gonna set this as just a basic MD box layout, and let's jump in. Now, before we work on the bottom thing, let's just add a couple of the top things here. Let's just add a few things. First, let's go orientation. And I want to set that to vertical. And then let's give this an MD toolbar or a top toolbar. And we're just going to make a little fake top bar. It's not going to do anything just to make the app look a little nicer for this video. Uh, you don't really need to do this, but we could. But you know, we might as well. It's been a while since we've done Kibby. So let's call this our top toolbar, right? I don't know. Now let's give this a left underscore action underscore items. And let's set this equal to we want double brackets. And let's just go menu. And you would call a callback here, right here, type thing. If you wanted this button or this menu to do anything, we don't want the menu to do anything. I just want it to kind of appear. So we'll just leave that blank. And same thing with the right underscore action underscore items. And again, double brackets. And let's just give this a dots dash vertical. All right, that'll do for the top bar. And we'll look at that in just a second. Let's also give this an MD label. I want to spell that right. There we go. And inside of here, I want to give this an ID of my underscore label. Because when we click on our little button at the bottom, we want to change this label just so we have something to change. And so we can see how to do things with that button when you click on it. So I'll just give this a, an ID of my label. Let's set the text equal to, you know, some stuff. All right. There we go. And then let's give this an H align of like center, just to put it in the middle of the screen. Okay, so this is all just for fun. Now we want to work on this bottom toolbar. So we start by giving this an MD bottom app bar, right? And then inside of here, we want to give it an MD toolbar. Okay, now inside of this, we can define what we want. So let's give this an icon of Git, and we're going to use any icon you want, but just use Git because we're doing coding stuff. So why not? And uh, let's give this a type of bottom because we want this guy on the bottom. And we want to give this a mode of free dash end. Now, that's all we need for now. If we want this button to actually do something, we'll have to change this a little bit. And we'll look at that in just a second. But let's go ahead and save this and run this just to see if this is looking okay. So let's go Python b button dot pi. And when we do, we see here's our app, we've got our toolbar. Now if we click on this, you see nothing happens because we haven't made it do anything, as I mentioned, and we got this button right here. And it's sort of down in the bottom right hand corner It's kind of floating above here, we got our con we got our some stuff right there, If we click on this, nothing actually happens. So okay, that's cool. That's strictly speaking how you do it. That's how you get this thing right there. But what if you want to move this guy around? So we might want it down a little bit. So it sort of overlaps the bar. We might want it in the center. We want might want it down here and overlapping. So let's start out with pushing it down a little bit. So to do that, we just change the mode. So I'm going to comment this out. And let's go mode again. So that was the free end. Let's give this an end and see what that looks like. So let's head back over here, run it again. 
And now it's sort of pushed down over the bar and you get this little, you know, space here. You can give it a, an elevation if you want to pop it up a little bit and give it a shadow. We're using a dark theme anyway, so you probably wouldn't see the shadow, but okay, very cool. So that's end. So you have end and you have free end. So free end puts it above the bar and end just puts it below the bar. Uh, let's comment this out and let's also go now mode and we could just go center. So let's save this guy and run it. And now it's in the center, but it's kind of smushed down over the bar and you've got the little space around it. That's kind of nice. All right. And as you can imagine, we can also do, uh, let's comment this out. Mode free center. Getting the theme here, end and free end, center and free center, right? Pretty simple. And as you would expect, this would make it free of the bar and put it a little bit above it there. And that's cool. Okay. So let's go ahead and change this. I'm going to do end. I kind of like it over to the side and down a little bit. So now what if we want this thing to actually do something when we press it, when we click on it, right? Well, to do that, we just come down here and in the past we've for buttons, we've done like on press and things like that for an event with this, this toolbar button, we need to call on underscore action underscore button. And then we just call app whatever. So let's say presser. Let's create a function called presser, which is a terrible name, but you know me, I'm bad at naming these things. And let's comment here, uh, click the button. That's a good comment. <laughs> All right. So now we just need to create this presser function. So save this file, head back over to our Python thing. And inside of our main class here, we just define presser. Right? And we probably want to pass in self because we usually do. And then inside of here, you just do whatever you want to do. So remember, we've got this, um, where to go, my label, label. So if we want to just like change the label when we click the button, we can do that in the normal way we've done zillions of times before in this playlist Call self dot root dot IDS IDs. And then it's just my underscore label or whatever it's called. And we want to set the text equal to uh, you pressed it. Woohoo! <laughs> right. So now if we just save this, head back over here, run this guy one more time. You can see our buttons now down here. We click this, boom, this changes to you pressed it. Woo! <laughs> right. Uh, so pretty simple. So that's the bottom toolbar. Here you'll notice we don't have any text on this bar. We can change that if we really wanted to, just by coming in here and let's see. We can just come back over here and give this a title of, I don't know, let's say bottom menu. And we can save this, run this. Is that going to do the trick? Yes, it will. And okay, that's nice. We got a little menu. We got a little title there. If we want to put like a hamburger or something, we could do just like we did up here. We could just come up here and let's see, left or right. Let's go left. And, you know, just pop that in there, save it, run it. Now we got this little hamburger. It doesn't actually do anything. If you want it to actually do something, you have to play around with it a little bit. And I really didn't want to talk about that in this menu, but really quickly, we would just give this a lambda and then just call like, I don't know, X. An X, we don't have an X. We haven't created an X. This isn't going to do anything. But when we click here now, we'll at least get an error probably. Oh, we didn't even get an error. <laughs> but it doesn't do anything, right? So if you wanted to, for instance, have it do something, hmm, let's see. This is why you don't do things on the fly. So let's go app.presser. We do that. And then, yeah, I don't know, give that a try. So go ahead and run this. We've got this, we click on it. Hey, you pressed it, that at least does something. But you can see, that's how you kind of like I said, I didn't want to get into it, but that's how you would, you know, have these menu things do something when you click on them, you create a function and do whatever you want with that function. Again, I don't want to talk about that in this video. I just want to talk about this little button thing here. And we've pretty much done that. So, okay, pretty simple and pretty fun. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. 
My name is John Elder from CodingMe.com, and I'll see you in the next video.